Honorable President of India, Sri Pranam Mukherjee, Sri Ajay Narayan Jha, Secretary to Government of India, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Dr. S. S. Negi, Director General of Forests and Special Secretary to Government of India, other senior officers, my faculty colleagues and probationers of 2015 batch. It is indeed my proud privilege to introduce the IFS probationers of 2015 batch to the Honorable President of India, who is known for his tremendous learning and ocean of knowledge and distilled wisdom. Honorable Rastapati ji, this batch consists of 61 probationers, of which two are foreign trainees from Royal Government of Bhutan and four lady probationers. These probationers come from diverse academic backgrounds, including engineering, agriculture, and life sciences from premier academic institutions of the country, and along them, one is PhD. Almost all regions and states of the country are represented in this batch. Having joined the service in September 2015, these young probationers are presently undergoing their professional training at Indira Gandhi National Forest Academy, Dehradun. This would continue till April 2017, after which they shall join their respective cadres. The scientific forestry in India was initiated in 1864 with the appointment of first Inspector General of Forest, Dr. Brandes, a German forester, and Imperial Forest Service was created in 1867. Due to lack of facilities for training in India, the training was then organized in Germany, France, England, and was later shifted to India in 1926 at Imperial Forest Research Institute, Dehradun. Indian Forest Service as third All India Service was revived in 1966. Honorable Sir, the IFS officers recruited by UPSC are trained at IGNFA. The practical aspects and the skill relevant to the forestry profession are imparted by field exercises, practicals, and excursions, which form an integral part of the training. As a matter of fact, the professional training is a mix of theoretical and practical inputs, attachment with various institutions of excellence, besides field tours and exercises in various parts of the country. Such exposure tours provide them an opportunity to see not only the best practices in the forestry, but also the feel of diversity and culture of the country. In addition to 24 forestry subjects and extensive field tours, the probationers are exposed to parliamentary appreciation course, participatory rural appraisal, sociological aspects during their NGO attachment, while management inputs are provided by Indian Institute of Management. Besides, there are other attachments for one week each at National Police Academy, Hyderabad, for detection and investigation of wildlife crime, Judicial Academy for legal inputs, and Indian Military Academy, Dehradun, for weapon training and equitation. The professional training at IGNFA strive towards transforming these young professionals to be competent and able professionals so as to equip them with necessary skills and aptitude. The professionals are also prepared to undertake their future assignment with the sense of purpose and urgency in their career ahead with professional approach, integrity, and above all, sensitivity to the need of local people. To keep pace with changing times, they are also provided with sufficient sociological and managerial inputs so that they can work with confidence with the local institutions of decentralized governance, such as Gram Sabha and Panchayats. Honorable Rashtrapati ji, the aspect of need to work with local institutions has assumed paramount importance in the change paradigm to ensure meaningful partnership with the forest dep dependent communities, especially tribals, for their socioeconomic empowerment through sustainable management of forests. At the same time, 
This partnership based on the cardinal principle of care and share shall ensure maintenance of vital forest ecosystem services like provisioning of water, mitigation of climate change, diversity, biodiversity conservation, and above all, ecological security of the country. With this brief introduction, may I now request IFS professionals, Sri Puneet Goel, and thereafter Ms. Anu P. James to give a brief account of their training experience at IGNFA. माननीय राष्ट्रपति श्री प्रणब मुखर्जी जी हमारा सौभाग्य है कि हमें भारतीय वन सेवा के प्रशिक्षण के अपने अनुभवों को माननीय राष्ट्रपति महोदय के साथ साझा करने का अवसर प्राप्त हुआ है महोदय देश के बहुमूल्य वन और वन्य जीव संसाधनों की रक्षा तथा संरक्षण का दायित्व भारतीय वन सेवा के अधिकारियों के कंधों पर है और वे देश के प्रशासनिक ढांचे का एक महत्वपूर्ण घटक है इस कर्तव्य के निर्वहन हेतु परिविक्षार्थियों में तकनीकी प्रबंधकीय तथा सामाजिक कुशलता अत्यंत आवश्यक है इस हेतु इंदिरा गांधी राष्ट्रीय वन अकादमी में दिया जाने वाला 16 माह का प्रशिक्षण कक्षा सत्रों अतिथि व्याख्यानों व्यापक शैक्षिक दौरों तथा क्षेत्र अभ्यास का एक श्रेष्ठ संयोजन है महोदय विशिष्टीकरण के इस समय में विषयगत दक्षता परम आवश्यक है वन संवर्धन पारिस्थितिकी वन्य जीव प्रबंधन वन विधि तथा सामुदायिक वन प्रबंधन संबंधी प्रशिक्षण के द्वारा हम देश के विविध वन संपदा के संरक्षण और प्रबंधन के क्षेत्र में दक्षता विकसित करने में सक्षम हो पाते हैं एक वन अधिकारी के कार्य क्षेत्र में शारीरिक स्वास्थ्य के उच्च मानकों का पालन आवश्यक होता है इसे देखते हुए अकादमी में दिन की शुरुआत सुबह के शारीरिक प्रशिक्षण के साथ और समापन शाम के खेल के साथ होता है प्रबंधकीय और नेतृत्व कौशल की प्राप्ति के लिए हम नियमित रूप से समूह गतिविधियों भूमिका निर्वहन सत्रों और विभिन्न क्लब गतिविधियों में भाग लेते हैं जिनमें सांस्कृतिक साहित्यिक प्रकृति और समकालीन विषय शामिल हैं महोदय गुरुदेव रविंद्रनाथ टैगोर ने कहा है सर्वश्रेष्ठ शिक्षा वह नहीं है जो केवल जानकारी देती है बल्कि वह है जो हमारे जीवन को समस्त अस्तित्वों के साथ सद्भाव में लाती है मुझे विश्वास है कि इंदिरा गांधी राष्ट्रीय वन अकादमी में हमें प्राप्त होने वाला प्रशिक्षण यह सुनिश्चित करेगा कि हम भारत के विकास एवं जन कल्याण को उसके वन वन्य जीव और पर्यावरण के संरक्षण के अनुकूल बनाने में सफल हों धन्यवाद जय हिंद ऑनरेबल प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया श्री प्रणब मुखर्जी सर टूडे इज ए मच चेरिस्ट ओकेशन इन द लाइफ ऑफ एवरी एंग प्रोबेशनर टू हैव ऑडियंस विद ऑनरेबल प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया We are extremely privileged and honored to be here, sir. During the past seven months in the academy, we are trying to understand the intricately woven tapestry of nature through various training activities. Within a month of joining our academy, we had a first taste of the forest in the form of a week-long introductory tour, traversing and exploring that mighty salt forest of the Himalayan landscape. Was for us a metaphorical rite of pa passage into a forester. Our field visits to the West Indian states of Gujarat and Rajasthan shattered our preconceived notions of lifelessness in the semi-arid and desert regions of India. We met foresters who are tying down huge shifting sand dunes with green cover and undertaking plantations on desert areas and urban landscapes alike. We were also exposed to the exemplary afforestation work carried out by foresters in the Indira Gandhi Canal Command area. In the academic volumes, we have read that forests provide us with invaluable ecosystem services. On a visit to Shimla, we realize the profound relation between forests and water by observing the provisioning of drinking water from the pristine forests of Shimla. Thus, we learn that foresters are essentially the custodians of the country's life support system. During these visits and interactions, we have also realized the role of women in forestry sector. The entry of lady officers into IFS began in 1980, and today they comprise 10% of the cadre strength and are contributing significantly towards the protection and management of our forests. The biggest challenge before us today is to balance developmental aspirations with environmental imperatives. Rather than seeing each other as dichotomy, we need to develop all possibilities of synthesis and synergy. We are all gearing up 
to take up the mandate of being efficient managers of a country's rich natural heritage. Sir, today we stand before you. We take the solemn oath to serve our country with utmost dedication and commitment. Thank you. Jai Hind. Good morning to all of you. Sri Ajay Narayan Jha, <coughs> Secretary, Minister of Environment and Forests, Government of India. Dr. S. S. Negi, Director General of Forests and Special Secretary to the Ministry. Dr. Shuji Kumar, Director Indira Gandhi National Forest Academy. Professionals of Indian Forest Service and Royal Government of Bhutan, distinguished guests, senior officers accompanying this provisioner's badge. I welcome all of you to this historic building, which is going to complete almost 100 years. It is short of 15, 16 years of that mark. But since its construction and occupation, this building has played very vital role in the contemporary politics. And when you pass through the corridor, walk through the long halls, confront with the sandaliers hanging from the high dome or the glazed tiled Roman Gothic columns. It reminds you the history of almost 100 years which has been substantially formulated by the occupants of this building. Whether it is British viceroys or governor generals from 1931 to 1947 or thereafter the presidents of the Republic of India from 26 January 1950 till date. It has many interesting facets and importance. It was constructed at the height of the British imperial power. The First World War was over. Second World War is yet to come. In the interregnum period when the British power appeared supreme in Europe, with the defeat of Germany in the First World War and complete devastation of France as a consequence of the war. Russia withdrawing itself from the mainstream of European politics with the Bolshevik Revolution in 1917. There was no challenge to the British power in Europe. And Europe dominated the world politics in the sense that it had vast control over Africa, Asia, and Latin America through its colonization. At one point of time, territories as far as Aden entered Singapore, Maldives, Sri Lanka, what is now called Myanmar, then called Burma, up to border of Iran, were administered from base building because British Governor General had the responsibility of it administering this vast tract. 
After the Second World War, this building witnessed the major transformations in our life. The subcontinent was divided. Myanmar became independent, sovereign entity, as is the case of Sri Lanka, which was known Ceylon at that time. Process of decolonization began. India itself was partitioned into two. Later on, another sovereign state was carved out of that territory. And a country which was won before 14th, 15th August 1947 is now divided into three. All these major changes have taken place. Of course, this building did not have much responsibility, but it housed the constitutional head, whose job is to protect, preserve, and defend the constitution of India through the Council of Ministers appointed by him. The corollary of the democratic system of government through parliamentary form of government President is the head of the government, but not executive head, nominal head. Constitution is the supreme, and president's responsibility is to watch that supreme authority, constitution, is preserved, defended, and protected. For the last four years, which I have, I have spent here, I have met so many professionals to different services, starting from Indian Administrative Service, Police Service, Foreign Service, Railway Service, and Forest Services. Indian Forest Service, as your director pointed out, has been one of the three important All India services. And it began well before the independence of the country and the formulation of the constitution. And rightly, the Radun was chosen as the headquarter of this academy. And now, through a regular competitive examinations, annual recruitments take place the same process through which the other civil servants are recruited. I would like to congratulate you for your success in a very difficult competitive examination conducted by the UPSC, which speaks of your academic excellence. You are entering into a new phase of your career you are joining the public service. After the completion of two years, in-depth training inside the academy, outside, almost all over the country, you have acquired the skill and domain knowledge which will help you to discharge your responsibilities for the next 35, 40 years as I find the average age of this batch is just 28. Many of them would be less than that. Some of them may be little more than that. But best part of your life you will be dedicating to this service of the people of this country. Public service in our country today bears tremendous responsibility. The amount of responsibility, power of decision making, and the authority vested in your young soldier, you will not find any parallel in any other job other than public service. Therefore, always you will have to keep in mind that the people and the nation has trusted you, your ability to handle the most intricate problem, 
which will be part of your professional career. The whole world is worried today. Why? It is because of the fact, no doubt over the centuries, we have destroyed the resources of Mother Earth and almost one tandy. Mindlessly we have destroyed. Many, many years ago, at the beginning of the century, Mahatma Gandhi warned us. By a few simple words he pointed out that Mother Earth has enough resources to meet the need of its children, but not much to meet the greed of very few. And the world's problem today is being caused by the greed of the very few who were powerful, who were colonial masters, who were exploiters of the resources, material, physical, and even intellectual, all over the world. What was the characteristics of the colonialism? Suddenly they recognized the danger and as usual, the international community is to address this issue. The problem is not merely confined to the exploiters of the natural resources or the destroyer of the environment and the exploiter of it but it has affected the entire humanity. The people living in a small island of the Papua New Guinea groups, or Fiji, or Trinidad and Tobago, they are thinking whether their country, whether their island, will survive or will be submerged under sea water. A small Himalayan race or Pirendis or Alps who lived in the world of ice, they are thinking glaciers are melting. Why it is melting? There are no causal connections. Whole world is concerned with it. But their very existence depends on what steps the international community take to address these issues. Forest is one of the most important ingredient in this climate change. Long ago, we are aware of it, but we did not do enough of it. Ceremonially, we observed plantation annually every year. It began when Punjab Rao Deshmukh was the agricultural minister in Nehru's cabinet. Even long before that, when Mahatma Gandhi established Gujarat Vidya in 1920, and Rabindranath Tagore established Shantini Keton in their annual curricula, tree plantation in a ceremonial way was the annual academic feature. But it was not enough. In the art of industrialization, constructions, development, one ton do we have destroyed forests. And the forest coverage, which should be nationally, and it should be spread evenly all over the country, is less. Fortunately, our awareness level has increased and we are addressing these issues. 
I was telling you, your role will be very critical. Not only patriotic and service oriented, because you are to preserve and protect the forests. You will also be entrusted to protect, preserve, and encourage the forest dwellers whose livelihood are depending on the foreign forest products. There is very close cultural interaction between these forest dwellers and our own ancient culture of protecting trees, forests. India is a signatory out of 196 countries. Of the United Nations Conference on Conservation of Climate, Climate Changes, I'm sorry. United Nations Conference of Climate Change, UNCCC. And mere signing the documents is not adequate. We have also adopted in 2008 10-point programs of Prime Minister for the climate change. International Front we have fought against the Western powers who were primarily responsible for the destruction of climate and causing this peril that you have to pay adequate compensation and the responsibility of each country to mitigate the damage should be its power, its ability to meet that responsibility and should be backed by the financial support. Why it was called for? You require power. Right now, when I am speaking before you, 300 million plus people of India do not have any form of electricity. Any form of electricity. So you have to give them power. The more you will produce power from coal or from diesel, Hydrocarbon sources, the more you contribute to the pollution. Contribution of CO2 would be more. World conferences, world leaders are advising reduce it. How I can reduce it? I must have an alternate access. If I go for the solar power, if I go for the non-conventional power, wind, ocean, for that, substantial investment requirement is there. Poor developing countries do not have money. Therefore, one of the objectives of this UNCCC was not only to fix the mitigating responsibility, but also to enhance the capability. And you will be entrusted with the responsibility of restoring our depleting forest resources. We had rich forest resources. But in our anxiety for industrialization and development, we have wantonly destroyed the rich forests and we are suffering. Our monsoon is unpredictable which is the mainstay of our agriculture. Untimely floods are coming. Last year, what happened in Tamil Nadu? That normally does not happen. It is because the unpredictability of the monsoons. We have set up a center in the North Pole where our scientists are working and one of the important mandate to them was to study the behavior of the monsoon winds. Fortunately, they are doing good job. 
and they have been able to establish certain causal reasons of this behavior and now as per their findings prediction could be accurate but this is one area of the diverse problems i am talking of you are interested with the responsibility of nurturing forests protecting preserving and advancing it you will contribute greatly to this process of saving humanity from the imminent destructions civilization is in peril there is no doubt in it as it happened we read in the history many a civilization collapsed whether it is babylonian or assyrian or even nile civilization of egypt it is because of the negligence of the people of those people to the essence of their responsibilities they made that catastrophe you are entering into indian forest service at a critical moment and at least in one important segment of this overall scenario if you dedicate yourselves that yes i will do my job to the best of my ability i have no doubt you will be able to make your own contribution not only to advance your career as officers of indian forest service but you will make your contribution to protect the civilization to protect the humanity i wish you all success ladies and gentlemen thank you jai hind honorable president of india shri pranam mukherjee sahab shri jha secretary government of india and dear colleagues it is a proud privilege for me to propose the vote of thanks we are extremely grateful to the president for giving us this opportunity to be here today the inspiration and guidance given by him to the young indian forest service officers will help them successfully in serving the country and the serving the people of india in the years to come honorable rashtrapati ji your in depth knowledge and experience has been amply reflected in the address today sir on behalf of the ministry of environment forest and climate change and all the indian forest service officers present here i once again express my gratitude for giving us the, an opportunity to be here today and to listen to your words of guidance and encouragement thank you sir